up, YouTube traders and investors? Welcome back. Bennett Tindall, tradinganalysis.com. Thank you guys for taking time out of your day to join us. Wednesday, January 26, 2022. Just checking in following another volatile session in the markets. Go figure. We apologize for not having our live stream show this morning. Typically, we're live every Wednesday, 845 right here on this channel. We will be back, however, next Wednesday, February 2nd. Goodness, already through the first month of the year. It goes by really quick. I tell you that. If you're interested in taking advantage of the current volatility in the cryptocurrency space, I would encourage you guys to check out Crypto Lab tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern with Alex. That takes place every week here on the TA YouTube channel. I think we're up against what I would consider to be the second best opportunity for Bitcoin ever. So it's something you're not going to want to miss. Let's get started. Today we had the January Fed meeting. Now, the January Fed meeting came with no change in rates, which is really to be expected. Markets were not pricing in a rate change at this meeting, they are pricing in the quarter point move come March. Interestingly enough, in the statement release, there was no discussion regarding the balance sheet. And if you'll recall earlier this month, it was the December meeting minutes that had talks regarding balance sheet runoff following the first rate hike that kind of spooked investors and started the volatility in the distribution move that we've seen, the rotation away from growth and into value that we talked about on our Wednesday live stream. And with a, uh, with a lack of, of, of commentary or language regarding the balance sheet in the statement, we actually got a little bit of an a, a intraday rally. Markets rallied up back into the high uh, from the previous session in the morning. But at the same time as we went into the afternoon or we went into the press conference, the rally faded quite promptly. And if you're a client of trading analysis, you'll know that we expected that afternoon rally to fade. Um, and, and we expected a, a new low in the indexes. But the bigger question that many investors have on their minds, and it's a question that we're gonna look to address and, and answer this evening, is whether or not we are up against a major change in underlying market sentiment. Is this the start of a larger bear market correction? Are we going back to the COVID lows? Are we gonna see a 20 or 30% move? We, we don't think so. We don't think the bear market is here just yet. If you follow my work, if you've been following my work, you'll know that I had a 15.6 to 15.8 NASDAQ 100 target going into the year that I did expect could set us up for that larger correction, but I still don't think it's upon us. I really don't think we're quite there just yet, but I do think we still have further to go on the downside before this overall corrective trend has, has run its course. So let's go ahead and jump uh, into the charts here. I'm gonna take you through uh, a basic breakdown of, of the Elliott Wave count, and we're utilizing the Motive Wave platform. The Motive Wave platform, this is our, our trading analysis edition of Motive Wave. If you are, are at all familiar with, with Elliott Wave, you know that there are many tools out there. This is our preferred tool. There are, are many advantages to this piece of software. It's one of uh, two key tools, actually, that we utilize. In addition to Motive Wave, we also use Optima. You've seen our research director and senior analyst, Terry Long, use that in our Wednesday live streams. We're going to be talking about Optima a lot more this year. We've got some webinars coming up on it. So if you're interested in Optima or relative rotation graph analysis, um, which was created by, by Julius de Kempner, fantastic individual. We've had him on the show before. If you're interested in that, stay tuned. We would encourage you guys to subscribe to the notif uh, with notifications to, to stay up to date and, and to not miss that event. So when it comes to Elliott Wave, many tools, we prefer Motive Wave. Let's get started here, and, and let me just take you through the wave structure in the S&P. So before I get to the wave structure, I want to just show you guys really quickly uh, a little bit about Elliott. Perhaps you're new to the channel, you're new to the world of technical analysis in general. When it comes to technical analysis, there are some classic patterns of technical analysis that, that many traders learn in you know TA 101, if you would, technical analysis 101. Triangle, head and shoulders, a bull flag, a rising wedge, a broadening pattern, a parallel channel, double bottom, etc. If you are a skeptic of Elliott Wave, but you're familiar with these patterns, then you're just you're just one step away. You're almost there. Elliott Wave takes it a step further, and through um, you know time-tested patterns that go back to the the you know late 1800s, we have determined R. N. Elliott specifically has determined the underlying sentiment of, of market participants and what each of these patterns mean in terms of the overall trend when you see a stock moving from the lower left hand corner to the upper right hand corner of your screen. So when it comes to classic patterns of technical analysis, as Elioticians, we realize these are just pattern developments and we can assign them positions within a trend 
And that helps us to determine where a larger shift might occur. Also, it's all about determining whether or not we're in a trend establishing market or if we're in a correction, a correctional market that is range bound or sideways to lower. And when looking at the chart of the indexes, before we go any further there, when looking at the chart of the S&P 500, and we're on a 195 minute time frame, we use the 195 minute time frame as it is exactly a half day session, as opposed to the four hour 240 minute chart. Looking at this chart, and I want you to notice, from the COVID low, from the March 2020 low into the September 2020 high, we had a lot of overlapping corrections. We had a lack of clarity in terms of where those higher degree structures are. But fast forward to post-October of 20, the market starts giving us corrections that are more clearly isolated from one another. We don't have the overlap, and as a result, we're able to determine where within a trend these patterns fit. And it's really from the October low back in 2020 that we start getting these more clearly isolated corrections, which do begin to exhibit qualities, guidelines, rules that are are typical of them and that increase the conviction level that, that that is actually the case. That's actually the wave count at work. So first of all, I want you to notice that going back, coming off of the October low, we get a solid five wave rally and then we're met with a three wave retracement. Going back to the PowerPoint here, we know that trend establishing motive waves move in the direction of the higher degree trend that higher degree trend can be an upside move, it can be a downside move. And corrections go against the higher degree trend. So if you're in a directional move to the upside, your counter trend moves go against that trend. And if you're in a directional move to the downside, the counter trend moves go to the upside against the down, uh, the downtrend at work. And for now, we continue to view markets as still within a corrective trend, within a corrective wave from the November 22nd highs. Here's a nice example of trend establishing motive waves versus counter trend corrective waves. So when looking at the chart of the S&P, notice the five wave rallies have been from the lower left to the upper right, meaning they're upside developments, and all of the counter trend corrective waves have been to the downside. So in the most basic sense of Elliott, we have a five wave rally into September and a three wave pullback into October. Then we get a five wave rally into November 22nd of 2021. And now we see this as a big three wave corrective trend. Inside of this orange third wave, the orange third wave has a nice clear five wave subdivision of its own. This is a smaller degree trend. This is what's referred to as a child wave. This sub wave or child wave demonstrates some qualities that give it a very high conviction. Meaning, first off, uh, corrections of the same degree tend towards equality. That is either equality in duration or equality in magnitude. This fourth wave was exactly equal to the correction that we saw going into the March low. So from February 16th of 21 through March 5th of 21, the magnitude of that decline projected from our September of 21 high is where we found support. In addition to that, we utilize two key channeling techniques in the world of Elliott. Those key channeling techniques are actually integrated into the logic of Elliott. Now, there's many ways to draw channels. You can do base channels, parallel trend channels, etc. This particular channeling technique we utilize to determine where wave five might come to completion. So from our October low into our November 22nd, 21 high, we have one, two, three, four, five waves. One of the channeling techniques that we utilize when we have a completed wave two and a completed wave four, as well as a completed wave three, and we're trying to determine where the fifth wave might run into resistance, what we use in the world of Elliott wave is we draw the what is referred to as the two, four, three trend channel. You take a trend line from the low of two, you draw it through the low of four, you project your parallel trend line over the top of wave three. 
That, when used in combination with upside FIB projections, often gives you the stopping point for the wave five. So this tells me that we have five, three, five, and we're just working another garden variety three wave pullback. That means we should see one additional high in the indexes prior to a larger 20% move being possible. So zooming in here on the S&P, remember the discussion that we just had regarding trend establishing waves or trend waves, motive waves versus corrective waves. You can have a trend wave or a motive wave inside of a corrective wave. So for those of you looking at the decline from January 4th into today's current trading range and suggesting that looks like a five wave move, I would absolutely agree with you. And if you tune in to our Wednesday live stream show, you'll know that we had assigned a trigger point in the S&P 500 at 45.82.24. We talked about this last Wednesday, January 19th. And we knew as an Elliotician that in the event we break south of that level, that would automatically open the door to this downside move. And that's exactly what's occurred. In addition to breaking the trigger point, we broke short-term upside support, upside short-term trend line uh, support. You take a trend line from your December 3rd low, sourced December 3rd, established through the December 20th low, that's exactly where the January 10th, Monday, January 10th market rally started. We found support at this quote imaginary trend line as many like to see it who are unfamiliar with Elliott Wave or unfamiliar with, with technical analysis and charting in general. But that support, that trend line support gave us a sizable three plus percent rally. Okay, We caught this upside break with our clients. We traded a position in Microsoft. From there, we start to break south. And when we break south of this trend line support, we turn that trend line support now into resistance. We break the trigger point, and here we are down in wave three, back in wave four. We're looking for one more low, one more low in wave five. In fact, wave fives can truncate. So technically, the wave five can complete before exceeding the January 24th low. So this tells us we've got a one, two, three, four, five wave decline inside of C of what is a corrective wave. This corrective wave started January, excuse me, November 22nd, down in A, up in B, five waves down in C. I will admit the C wave Fibonacci relationship to either wave A or the C wave Fib relationship in terms of a B wave external retracement is sizable. It's very significant. It's beyond typical guidelines. But I want to remind you, we're in a larger fourth wave position. This larger fourth wave position starts to put up support between 4097 and 4275. This also has confluence with the October 4th low. Visiting the October 4th low is actually something that we discussed last year when talking about the possibility of December distribution. This is now kind of turned into January distribution. But again, the support zone is valid. The support zone is intact. We've got 4097 up to 4275. This is where I feel markets can stage a reversal for an upside breakout to complete orange way five somewhere north of 5,000 and then we see a larger market correction set in. Now, what if I'm wrong? And I have no problem at all admitting when and where I'm wrong, but this corrective pattern is not invalidated and will not be invalidated until we see a clear change in underlying sentiment. So you might be asking, how can we see that clear change in underlying sentiment? Sentiment has already been a bit sporadic. Well, allow me to illustrate. So zooming in on our 195 minute chart, we've got three waves down and three waves back. This tells us to expect five down to complete C of a wave four flat correction. And this should be met with a motive response back to the upside. 
if we do not see a motive response back to the upside, that means that this five wave move, instead of it being motive inside of wave C, this would be motive, aka trend establishing, in a A wave position. But we won't have the evidence that that's the case, that the bear is finally here, until we see the characteristics of, the structure of the pattern from that fifth wave completion. So, if I'm wrong, we will know that I'm wrong when we see how markets react to the new low that we do feel is coming. And again, the new low can truncate, so we may have done it today. Five down, if this five wave move down is met with three waves back on the upside in a clear corrective trend, here's a nice directional trend. If this is met with a clear corrective trend back to the upside, that's when we're going to have the evidence to say, hey, look, a larger ABC correction is probably upon us. But for now, we don't have that clarity. You can't have that clarity until we see how markets react. Personally, I think this market does give us one additional high before we see that larger market correction. And in terms of the psychology associated with this fourth wave, let me zoom in a bit here and talk about this move. So in this move, we've already seen multiple bounces back to the upside. We've seen what could have been um, rallies back. They ended up being false starts. Everybody who has been buying corrective pullbacks, let's say the trader who purchased the January uh, or the December 3rd pullback, and then they purchased the December 20th pullback, and then maybe they noticed the trend line support and they bought the January 10th pullback. Anybody who got into the market at these levels has started to question their conviction. They've started to question their bullishness. And now we get this big washout sale and flush into new lows on the 24th. As markets start to rally back, they start to go, okay, wipe the sweat off our foreheads. We are good. Then we get a new low. The new low will tell them likely that they're wrong. They're going to listen to many of the headlines and think this is a major bear market. This is a major turning point in, in, in equities and it's time to get out of stocks. And perhaps they do liquidate all of the positions that they accumulated into the new lows or into the corrective lows. Perhaps they liquidate those into support. Okay. They capitulate finally into support, right? Um, just before the reversal occurs. And then they start to see the upside rally set in and they think, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to go ahead and wait, and I'll wait until we break 47.18. We're going to wait until we break that range, they're thinking, um, and then I'll get back involved in stocks. And what will occur is they'll get back involved in the market, and right as they're getting back involved in the market is really when the distribution move is, is occurring. Okay, So phase one, early accumulation. Phase three, widespread participation. Four to five is, is distribution. Okay. They're going to see and they're going to buy into the new index highs. And then they're going to get hit with the real wave five top. Then they're going to begin to see the market sell off and they're going to go, well, last time I, I sold out way too early, I took a loss on all of these entries. I'm going to go ahead and stick around. Okay. And let's say they stick around for the A wave and then we get the B wave back and they think, oh, we're good. We're going to stick around. Markets are A okay. And then they get the real sell-off, and then they just get smoked in the C-wave decline. That is the sentiment that is associated often with these higher degree 3, 4, 5 developments, and it's something you need to be watching out for. You need to go into these sort of markets with, with clear objectives in mind, clear risk management practices, um, and, and really clear, clear shopping lists. Okay, So even if this is a bear market, even if I'm wrong and we do have another sizable decline to come, we don't know that is the case, and we won't know that's the case until we see how markets react out of the new index lows, because we do feel that they are coming. So that's the S&P. Let's go take a look at the NASDAQ. Looking at the NASDAQ 100, we've got a very similar structure at work in that we did a three-wave move down, a three-wave back, and now we're unwinding in a sharp five-wave decline. Same sentiment applies here. We do think we'll get another five-wave rally. Once that five wave rally completes, then we see the larger pullback as being possible. 
Now let's take a look at the chart of the Dow Jones. Looking at a chart of the Dow Jones Industrial, this is a chart which, if I just draw a box here, has been sideways since May 10th of 21. Essentially, we've gone a lot of places, but we haven't made a whole lot of progress. Does this look like a directional move to the downside? Does this look like a trend establishing move to the downside? Absolutely not. This looks like a garden variety, corrective pullback, major downside support, 31,902, should offer a relief rally to the upside. So that's our view on the indexes. Again, if in fact we are wrong, if I'm wrong, if the team's wrong, if this is not five waves to finish C of a wave four flat, we'll have the evidence that that's the case when we see how the market reacts to the new low or to the wave five completion. If we deem the wave five completing uh, into today's low and we call it for a truncated fifth, the same is true. We determine, we gauge the sentiment, we gauge the structure of the price action off of, off of the low, okay? So motive to the downside, we've got a motive wave, we've got a five wave rally or a five wave decline in this instance, we're viewing that as C of a wave four flat. If we're wrong and we get three back, we'll adjust accordingly. We will then pivot, become a bit more defensive, and look for uh, a larger distribution move lower in the indexes themselves. Now let's take a look at bonds and yields. We'll take first uh, a look at the 10-year yield. 10-year yields have been rallying higher, which is really of no surprise. We've been anticipating this break higher from the consolidation. And now we're approaching what should be a completed five-wave rally. I envision markets being pressured, growth, high multiple tech stocks being pressured by yields moving higher up to that 2% level in this wave five. While yields are moving up, finishing this fifth wave, indexes are moving lower, finishing their correction. Then when we correct this entire rally in yields, we will see markets move into that higher fifth wave position. Once the higher fifth wave position um, finishes, we will have likely have corrected this entire breakout, and then we can see the bigger move up in yields, possibly from a technical perspective. And that could be um, along with, with the Fed's plans come March. We know um, they will have, 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 have tapered their purchases completed um, early March. That's when the first hike should occur, and that's when potentially balance sheet runoff uh, and normalization will, will begin to occur as well. So a lot of factors to dissect. We don't think we're quite there yet. We're going to go ahead and take it one wave at a time. We've got some very clear objectives. If you guys, uh, if you do enjoy our work, we would encourage you guys to check us out, tradinganalysis.com, to see how we can help you along the way in your journey. If you did enjoy the free content, we would appreciate a thumbs up. Let the YouTube algorithm know that you are enjoying it. It helps distribute it accordingly. And then, of course, um, subscribe with notifications. It, it certainly supports the channel. We appreciate it. Be safe. Stay healthy. Dodge the headlines. Stay one step ahead. Hard right edge of the chart is your best forward leading indicator. Okay. See you guys on the next video update. Take care.